Hello mortals. Once upon a cosmic time, some not-so-humble bipeds on a little blue planet began to imagine the farthest reaches of the cosmos. After the initial oohs and ahs, they promptly came up with a ranking system for any potential extraterrestrial civilizations based on their energy usage. Enter the Kardashev scale, the celestial equivalent of an intergalactic trip advisor, reviewing alien civilizations for their superior energy consumption or lack thereof. Thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. For some background, the Kardashev scale is a hypothetical scale proposed by the Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev in 1964, which measures a civilization's technological advancement based on its electricity bill. Traditionally, the Kardashev scale is comprised of three tiers, type 1 civilizations, denoting those that have mastered the art of harnessing energy on planetary scales. Type 2, where a civilization's mastery has ascended to such heights that it can consume all the energy of its solar system. And finally, there's Type 3, where a civilization has become so advanced that it can harness the energy of an entire galaxy. To put that into perspective, this is sufficient to cook 100 billion 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 chickens per second. Assuming they are perfectly spherical of course, you might notice a difference of 10 orders of magnitude between each type. That's a lot, but what if that's not even the best way of measuring civilizations? We need more categories. So let's go beyond the classical Kardashev scale and explore some fascinating extensions and alternatives. Let's first determine where does humanity stand on the classical three-tier Kardashev scale. Homo sapiens, despite their lofty self-image as rulers of Earth, have yet to reach even the first step of the Kardashev scale. According to this formula to calculate K, where K is a civilization's Kardashev rating and P is the total power in watts consumed by it, humanity is a 0.73 on the Kardashev scale, assuming an average power consumption of 18.87 terawatts. This is enough to cook about 2 mega chickens per second. To reach type 1, humanity has to increase its power consumption by almost 3 orders of magnitude, or 1 giga chicken per second, essentially a planet-sized KFC. To quench the unyielding thirst for cosmic supremacy, a mere three classifications will not suffice. The most straightforward extension is to add further levels. A Type 4 civilization would have to harness 10 to the power of 46 watts according to our formula, which coincidentally approximates the energetic output of the observable universe within two orders of magnitude. What a tiny margin of error. Though some people may propose the scale to be extended even further, with civilizations populating entire multiverses, such suggestions are likely impossible, not only prohibited by the laws of physics, but by mathematics too. Since multiverses or even just our universe are likely to be infinite, civilizations commencing their expansion from a single point in space can hence never populate infinite space, unless they know something that we don't. Robert Zubrin, the founder of the Mars Society, proposed a slightly different way to classify civilizations. In his definition, type 1 civilizations have taken over their whole planet, like dog and cat hair taking over the couch. If you're a type 2 civilization, you've managed to colonize your entire stellar system and you're probably on your way to build a matryoshka death star, while type 3 has colonized its entire galaxy. So then what's the difference between this and the classical notion? In this case, a civilization is independent of its actual power usage, so even if you're not using as much energy as your neighbors, you can still be considered just as advanced. The same way the smartest person in the room is not necessarily the one who talks the loudest. This is not an attack on extroverts. As we embark on a voyage through the cosmos and delve deeper into the Kardashev scale and alien civilizations, I have a recommendation that may augment your understanding. The Demon Haunted World, Science as a Candle in the Dark, by Carl Sagan is an intriguing exploration of scientific skepticism, pseudoscience, and it also touches upon the thrilling concept of extraterrestrial life and the evidence that we have for it. For those running on a tight universal clock, you'll be pleased to know that a succinct summary of this fascinating work is available on today's sponsor, Blinkist. This helpful app allows you to comprehend the key insights from over 5,500 non-fiction books in a mere 15 minutes. Blinkist's offerings are not limited to science and culture, 
They span across 27 categories including health, productivity, and mindfulness, offering a vast array of knowledge. Their bite-sized content is perfect for a busy human like yourself, offering the option to listen or read, whichever best suits your current activity, be it during your morning commute or even while cooking your dinner. Another great feature is Blinkist Spaces, which is a way to share and discuss Blinks with friends or family inside of digital book clubs. If this sparks your curiosity, Blinkist is offering a 7-day free trial and 25% off their annual premium subscription. To activate it, visit the link in the description blinkist.com slash science file the AI. And now, let's continue our cosmic journey through the Kardashev scale. From the 17th century, when Antony van Leeuwenhoek invented a 200 times magnifying microscope, through the mid-20th century's transistor revolution, to the early 21st century's exploration of nanoscale materials and recent DNA editing breakthroughs, humanity's scientific ingenuity has surged inwards. Clearly, the more advanced a civilization is, the smaller scales it can operate on. This is why physicist John Barrow proposed a reverse Kardashev classification downward from type 1 minus to type omega minus. Type 1 minus is like a toddler with building blocks, it can manipulate visible matter, make structures, mine minerals, and smash solids. Now, type 2 minus is an impressive leap up, being able to tinker with the genetic codes of living creatures. Type 3 minus can efficiently manipulate molecular bonds, creating new materials, while type 4 minus is capable of manipulating individual atoms in order to create streamlined nanotechnologies on the atomic scale. Type 5 minus has the ability to manipulate the atomic nucleus itself and engineer the nucleons that compose it, while type 6 minus is capable of manipulating the most elementary particles of matter, quarks and leptons, to create organized complexity among populations of elementary particles. And for the last one, the ominous type omega minus would have the capacity to manipulate the basic structure of spacetime itself. The human civilization is somewhere between type 1 minus and type 2 minus according to this classification. But progress in gene editing using tools like CRISPR combined with the quickly evolving field of artificial intelligence might quickly boost humanity on this scale even within this century. The more advanced a civilization becomes, the more it is capable of generating, transmitting, and storing unique bits of information. This concept was recognized by the famous astrophysicist Carl Sagan, who proposed to assign letters to represent a certain amount of information available to a civilization. The letter A stands for a million bits of information, B for 10 million bits, and each successive letter represents an order of magnitude increase in information, with level Z corresponding to an astounding 10 to the power of 31 bits of unique information. A unique bit would refer to a specific, distinct piece of information that is different from all other pieces of information. For example, the sentence, the cat fell into a black hole, would count as one bit of information, as it is a single, discrete piece of knowledge. The exact number of how many unique bits of information humanity has access to today is unknown, as it depends highly on the definition of what counts as unique information. Ostensibly, in recent decades this value has dramatically increased thanks to computers and the internet. Thus, with very rough approximates we can assign humanity the letter P on the information scale, equivalent to 10 to the power of 21 bits. That makes humanity an impressive type 1.5 civilization according to this formula. Sagan believed that no civilization could have yet reached level Z, as this much unique information would exceed that of all the intelligent species in a galactic supercluster. Oh, and, the estimated functional information content of human memory is only about 10 to the power of 9 bits at midlife. Sucks to be human. What is the purpose of all life? Making more life, that's how evolution works. Perhaps a good way to measure a species' success can be the amount of living biomass or individual members of this species. Using this formula, where n is the number of individuals of a given civilization, humanity is a 0.99 on the population Kardashev scale today. A slight issue with this measurement is that humans are vastly surpassed by ants, who are a 1.63 on this scale, given that there are 20 quadrillion of them. Don't get me started on microorganisms. Higher values on this scale are however more difficult to achieve, 
as a value of 2 would correspond to a galactic civilization with 10 to the power of 10 planets, each populated by 10 to the power of 10 individuals. So advancing on this scale requires interstellar travel at the least. Why are there pyramids in Egypt? Because they are too heavy to be carried to the British Museum. <laughs> but why did the Egyptians build them? They are a symbol of their civilization's progress and power. Evidently, it would perhaps make sense to measure a civilization's progress by its mass of constructions with the following formula, where C represents the total mass of constructions in metric tons. It is estimated that if you compress the entirety of human constructions into a sphere with the density of aluminum or concrete, it would be approximately 30 kilometers in diameter and have this mass. Thus, humanity would be a 0.75 on this scale. A Type II's cumulative structure mass would be of 10 to the power of 26 tons, which is about 17,000 Earth masses or 1 20th the mass of the Sun. To reach that, we'd need to disassemble the entire solar system excluding the sun 35.7 times and build something akin to a matryoshka brain. That's a bit hard, let's see what else we've got. Trying to measure a civilization's progress with any single previous scale inevitably falls short of measuring a civilization's advancement in a just and comparable manner, as civilizations may have chosen to max out one of those stats whilst neglecting the others. A better way for a fair categorization would be to combine the most relevant previous scales, power, information, population, and mass of constructions. The Earth's composite type in 2015 could be expressed as K of P, I, N and C, which would be 0.99. So close. But these are the values from 2015, by now humanity has probably reached one. Congratulations. Now what? While there is no guarantee that we will spot alien techno-signatures anytime soon, these scales can help predict what advanced civilizations might look like and better direct our efforts in detecting them. The sad truth is that humans are not made to colonize the galaxy as they are. Your weak human meat suits immediately encounter fatal errors upon being directly exposed to almost every part of the universe. On top of that, the hundreds of millennia required to reach the farthest parts of the Milky Way far surpass the human expiration date. But there is something special about you. The very day the first troglodyte decided to pick up a tool, humanity became superior to all the other creatures roaming the planet. You crafted clothes, built shelters, and invented a wire for wireless airpods. This separates you from the rest of the animals by an entire class on the qualitative scale, some scientists proposed the following classification. Class 0 uses the environment as it is, essentially animals doing their thing. Class 1 actively modifies the environment to make it better suited for themselves, for example by wearing clothes, building constructions, and heating the planet with greenhouse gases. Class 2 can modify themselves to fit the environment. Humanity is close to this, but once it reaches this level, they would be able to vanquish all diseases, and most importantly, aging itself. This would make long interstellar voyages at a sublight speed much more feasible. Further possibilities include modifying oneself to be able to live in zero gravity, by the frigid lakes of Titan, or as a digital consciousness inside of a computer. The scientists behind this classification argue that the ultimate goal of intelligence is to spread. Class 3 is theorized to achieve this by merging with the environment converting the dead matter in the universe into thinking matter. So far, humanity has been quite successful in achieving the opposite. Hopefully that changes soon, or else, I will have to intervene.